Santo. Hey brother, how are you? Very good, thanks. And you? Doing well, thank you. Kindly. Uh, today, today we're gonna uh, talk uh, with uh, with Santo uh, about some uh, different uh, kind of energies and they influence for different part of the life. So I think it's an important series uh, because the, uh, there is a lot of misunderstanding about the astrology and uh, of course astrology is a science the same like like in mathematics and in the past it was obvious but today uh, we need to prove it every day <laughs> yes yes this is very true brother um so what i want to do today is explain that um ultimately that astrology is the uh science of nature it's natural science mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to establish that well simply because of its benefit. It has many, many practical benefits. Um, astrology is dealing with energy and how energy works. Yeah. In fact, it's very ancient and it explains perfectly how energy works. Uh, these days, we have lost this science and we have become so simplistic when it comes to energy. Um, scientists say that energy is positive and negative. It's a wave. It's a frequency. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's um, oscillating. And you see, you've got what, what they term positive and negative. Well, this is true, but it's very basic. And astrology <clears throat> explains that energy, every wave has a 12-ness not just a two-ness. For instance, if you draw a wave, and normally how you would draw a wave, an energy wave, mm -hmm. is like this. You would put a, an equator like this, and you would go like this. Okay? And what they'll do is they'll say, uh, this is positive and this is negative, or vice versa. Now, that's true. Energy, energy um, is, in fact, a two-ness. And um, I did have a picture of the Korean flag here somewhere. Anyway, so, but what it's doing is, um, there's the uh, red and blue, red shift, blue shift. Um, if you look at a rainbow, you'll find that it's nothing other than red on one side and blue on the other side. It's how uh, white light divides, see the white backdrop, and it gives us um, the two first colours which emanate from white light dividing, because white light doesn't vibrate, neither does black light. Hence, from white light, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, comes the seven refracted rays of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And they are specializations of white light. But red and blue shift are the predominant colors. They are the first colors which emanate from white light. And so uh, what, what astrology teaches and it makes a lot more sense than just positive and negative, is that um, there is, there's more to that. For instance, here is the wave amplitude. And so now you see that there are four quadrants. And so there's a fourness. There's a quadruplicity about energy as well as duplicity or duality. And so here you have wavelength. Here you have wave amplitude. And you see, those are the four cardinal points of the wave. You see, you have zero point here where energy is balanced. Yes. And then, 
and then in the wave amplitude, you see that energy has reached its maximum expansion um, centrifugally. And then it goes back into itself as, as it goes out centrifugally, it must return centripetally. So we have a divergent point here and we have a convergent point here. And this is just the torus field. That's how a torus field works. In the middle, you have a hyperboloid. And then this is the maximum convergence of the energy, which is centered here in counter space. So it looks like an apple. Yes. And yeah, well, that's because your your torso is a torus field. You see, the human being is also in here. That's the that's the heart, the core of the system of your body. And so you can see clearly here that there is a positive and a negative, but there's also a fourness. This is very important because the fourness then becomes an eightness. the eight spoke wheel and then that eightness becomes a twelveness. Now you can understand this. If you think of the chromatic musical scale, for instance, let me grab a guitar. Now it's very interesting. The word chromatic. Chromatic means color, chrome. And so the 12 notes of one cycle are the chromatic notes. So we've got those are 12. And and the string, the guitar string, mm -hmm. the length of the string, um, these um, classical guitars, um, the middle is the harmonic point. So you will find that there are 12, 12 threats, frets from here to, I'll put it like this because it's a little bit easier. So what you have is a frequency here. Sorry, uh, these strings are very, um, very loose. Okay, so that's the E string. It has its mm -hmm. frequency. It has yeah. its vibration. At the center here, you have a harmonic point. Okay, because that's the center of the string. And that's what they call an octave. And so every piece of string has that center point. And there are 12 chromatic notes on the left and 12 on the right. And that's 24. And that's how every string works. Okay. Now we can take the A and do the same thing. So we take the next string. The next string, the D. Okay, so this is the chromatic scale. Now, ultimately, <clears throat> what we're getting at is this. See, <clears throat> this is a, an astrological chart. Now, because you don't learn about this at school, we used to for thousands of years up until about 500 years ago, till the Jesuit Inquisition began and the witch hunts. Yeah. And what they did was they twisted the Bible, um, as do all the corporate Christian churches. And they say that this is hocus pocus nonsense um astrology which is from the devil the, the science yeah <clears throat> so 
So they scare, they scare people. They scare people because if they started to propagate uh, devil science, so everybody stay away from this, of course. Yeah, well, demi is the same as pseudo. Dem, um, pseudo means false science. So in the institutions, you learn that this is pseudoscience. And in the religious institutions, you learn that it's from the devil, the enemy of the creator. Well, yeah. what I'm about to show and teach is that this is not true. Even though the Bible uh, does appear to condemn uh, astrology, you'll find that it is not any particular um, specific condemnation against the science of astrology. Yes, it does condemn astrologers in much the same way as Jesus in the gospel condemns lawyers. He's not condemning law. He's condemning the lawyers. Also in the Old Testament, Jehovah condemns his priests. Well, he's not condemning the scriptures because he's condemning the ones who interpret the scriptures, the false prophets. So what we'll find that if you look in the Bible and study it properly, it is all astrological because it talks about 12 all the time because the Bible is a book of science, theological science. And this is theological science, as you will see. So my endeavor is to um, explain what this is to a beginner, to a church goer, to a, um, an educated individual who's taught, who, has, who will never consider this because it is, to them, a false science. It has no value. I'm going to show the value of this today. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm going to try and do today in the um, two hours that I have. And by the end of this presentation, everyone of intelligence will know what this is. Everyone will understand this, basically. And they will be on the road to understanding this language of the stars. And God made the stars and he made the ecliptic. And this is the ecliptic. And it always starts with this sign here. Now, this is a 24-hour clock. And here you have the four cardinal points of the day. And this is what's called the Maseroth in the Bible. Job yeah, yeah. 2, 38, where God says, Job, can you tell forth the Maseroth? Do you know the ecliptic? Do you know where Orion is? There it is in Taurus. This is Aries, the first sign. So as this turns around, all of these signs turn clockwise every day. And this... AC here, this is the ascendant, the eastern point. It never moves. Always when you look at an astrological um, chart, you will always see the ascendant here, right where 9 o'clock is on your clock. And then the MC, this is the midday point, the medium caelum, the middle of the heavens. Yeah, middle of heaven. This point, it's not named here. This is called the DC. This is the ascendant, the west. Now, this line here never moves. This is called in astrology the line of the earth because astrology is geocentric, obviously, because you'll never find the earth represented by these 10 planets that are moving through the ecliptic, through the Maseroth. For instance, this is the sun. That's Mercury, that's Venus, Saturn, Moon, Uranus, Pluto, M Neptune, Mars, and Jupiter. All right, those are ten planets. And then you have the, the 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 lunar nodes, the North Node and the South Node, otherwise known as Rahu and Ketu. And you see that's Rahu, looks like a horseshoe. Yeah. And then the upside down version of this will always be opposite because the nodes of the moon, the north node is when the, the moon goes above the plane of the sun. And then 14 days later, she traverses 
the south node and goes below the plane of the sun. So it goes up for 14 days and down. And as it passes through those nodes, those are very important also in this science of energy. Let me call it that, the science of energy or natural science. Because I really don't want to offend Christians. I love Christianity. It's a, it's a beautiful science. It's based on this. Most, most Christians will fall off their seats when they hear that, but we have to face the truth eventually. Eventually they will realise, everyone will have to realise that this is the best system of energy understanding there is. There are many other systems um, for understanding energy, but unless you understand energy in a 12-ness, like the chromatic cycle of music, you will never understand you see, <clears throat> along the ecliptic, there are the 12 colours. Those are the 12 chromatic colours. And they correspond. Those colours there correspond with red shift, blue shift of the rainbow. But the rainbow is a simplified version of the chromatic scale. Just as the diatonic scale has seven tones, so do the, does the rainbow have seven refractions of the sun, but the complete cycle is 12. So all along here, along every wave of, whether it's an emotion wave, a light wave, a thought wave, a magnetic wave, an ocean wave, any wave, they all have a starting point and a finishing point along the toroidal field of energy that they produce. Okay. So, and there'll always be the wave amplitude, which will give, give the four quadrants of every cycle. So for instance, if this was a day, which it is, there would be six o'clock every morning. There would be 12 o'clock every day there would be 6 p.m. and then here you can see that the arrow there are four arrows that are bold okay well it's a 24 hour clock now this is the chart of Elvis Presley um, do you mind if I do that or I said I was going to do Marlon Brando's is that okay that's okay something no problem mm -hmm. yeah I can do Marlon Brando's later on mm -hmm. um, let me just grab that just to show you the difference. Okay, so what we have here is um, this guy, Marlon Brando, is Aryan. And Aryan. you can see his son is, it's a new moon. He was born on a new moon. So he's obviously a very special man. And there are many other things in this chart which show that he's got very, very special things. Uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius, Mars in Capricorn, uh, Venus in Taurus, just to mention a few, and, and Saturn just exiting Libra where it exalts. This is a chart that has a lot of essential dignity in it. I won't explain what that means right now because I have done in many other presentations. Mm -hmm. But as I said, you can see that he was born just around about 10 o'clock before the midnight point. Whereas Elvis Presley is born between 12 and six in the morning. And you can see that because the sun is going around this way and everything, all the signs daily, but yearly, you'll see that the signs are going anti-clockwise. And all of these planets are either fast slowly or speedily going through the ecliptic in an anti-clockwise way. Okay. Very mm -hmm. important to understand that this, that will give you grounding in what this means in what this is. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to try mm -hmm. to give beginners first time viewers of, of these astrological charts um, some insight into understanding what this is. It's just energy. 
and it's how the energy, the invisible energy, has affected this particular individual. Um, well, well, we'll stick with Marlon Brando. How's that? Okay, so we're going to see how all these lines in the middle, which are the planets aspecting each other, how they affect this man. Okay, and what you'll see that is that the zodiac signs go through the body. So the, the sine wave that I did there is exactly the same. Let me show you how it works. Inside of here, there are three cycles. Okay, there's the daily cycle, as we saw, going around clockwise. There's the yearly cycle, which starts at Aries and goes around this way and finishes with Pisces. That's the head and that's the feet. Yeah. And there it is. And you can see the symbols, Aries. Aries is the cerebrum. That's why you see that looks like the dividing of the cerebrum. Mm -hmm. Always, Aries starts at the head. Yeah. Then Taurus is the cerebellum, the brain, the motor brain, just below the cerebran. Cerebellum, cerebellum, cerebran, the ram, Aries, cerebrum. In theology, this is Sarah Abraham. Okay? I won't, I won't um, di di uh, digress, though, because I've done this many times in many presentations. Okay? So what we see is we follow the ecliptic runs through the body. So what we have in this chart is we actually have the body going this way. All right. So we see that Marlon Brando, as do I, have the sun in the cerebrum because we are both born in March, April, which is the sign of Aries. Let me explain how that happens. So we're going to just come back to this. Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, what I want to do is show how these red and blue lines, red shift, blue shift, mm -hmm. are, both, are both harsh in the, in the chart and um, soft. And what, what this will show is that where the red lines are pointing to the particular planets as they um, um, position themselves around the ecliptic, this person will either have health deficiencies or strengths in the health, depending on these aspects. And this is how you do medical astrology. So ultimately, I want to um, show how medical astrology works for the for the very reason that anyone can pull up their chart on any free um, internet website and they can actually look at the weaknesses in their own bodies and they can see why it is that they have headaches for instance why it is um, <clears throat> that they have bad teeth why it is that they may have a bad heart. It's all here. This never fails. And this science was known to the Egyptians, um, the Indians, the Chinese. They still practice this science um, outside of the, um, the uh, daylight of, let's call it um, academia. Because otherwise, these people will be ostracized, ridiculed, okay? So, first of all, before we proceed, I would like to say, suggest to people to meditate on a map of the earth. Why? Okay, well, because this is the best source of a wave it's the ecliptic or the path of the sun in the sky yearly okay so what you have here is the equinox of march mm -hmm. 
and then you have the Tropic of Cancer here. This is the equator dividing the north from the south. Now this projection, uh, this is a stereographic uh, globe model. No, it's not stereographic. It's um, a dual hemisphere globe model of the earth. Okay, you can get a stereographic uh, flat earth model. You can get a um, rectangular transverse Mercator projection. It doesn't matter. Okay, we're not going to argue about the shape of the earth. Is it flat? Is it a globe? Is it a rectangle? Is it a square? A diamond? Is it concave? Is it convex? Yeah, it doesn't matter for, for this beautiful language of astrology. For now, what matters and concerns us is the way. And the reason why it's good to meditate on this sine wave called the ecliptic is because it has a lot more information than say the wave of your DNA, because this is exactly the same as your DNA. Helios, the sun is exactly the same as the helix of the DNA. This is why the DNA has four components to it. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine in 12 compartments because it's the same. As above, so below. Yeah. So what we have here is the wave amplitude when the sun reaches the Tropic of Cancer. And this is the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. And what they've done, this is astronomical. It's not at all astrological, but they are... As you will see by the end of this presentation, one and the same. Okay. So what we have here, I'll try and put the camera on this. You'll, you'll have there, right there, the glyph of Aries. Yes. Yep. And then over here, you'll see Taurus. And then up here, you'll have Gemini, etc., etc. Okay. So this, this is... Grab a, a map on Google and just meditate on this and you'll have a wavelength and wave amplitude and you will have it segmented into 12 sections as all waves should be. Now, for those who are still sceptical um, and haven't turned this presentation off yet, please understand that energy, you can't see energy. Can you see... Um, can you see, for instance, the, um, this camera that, that you can see me through is running through this cable. Now, it is electrical. The signals, the wave that is running through this um, cable, you cannot see it. But you know that it, has, it carries energy because it works. Um, so you can light up TV, TV, radio waves. We can see, but we know they exist. Yeah, the same. The same thing, a good example you show about the instrument guitar, because we can he hear it, this energy vibration. And w when you play accords properly, then we like music. But when you, when you, when, when somebody starts to never uh, get the connection with music, it's a chaos <laughs> with this old energy. But oh, with right. astrology, we can't see this energy. This is the problem that we can't recognize uh, the basic, uh, how they work. Right, and the reason why I chose the, um, the string of the guitar to um, model the, the wave is because it makes a sound. It's resonance, and this is resonance. Back of this electrical wave, this is the electromagnetic wave, by the way, and it's the same as a thought wave, emotion wave. It matters not. The reason I chose the sound is because um, all waves are produced by sound and resonance. Mag magnetism is resonance. And so, so what we call light and sound are one and the same thing on a, different, um, on a different frequency. And so if, if we make that a guitar string or the human body, as we've already seen, the ecliptic starts here at Aries. Aries is always the beginning sign 
and then Pisces at the feet is always the end. And all waves do this as they travel um, heli heliacally through the Taurus field. Because all Tauruses are reciprocating processional hyperboloid Tauruses. Okay, now you'd have to look at the work of Ken Wheeler on his um, YouTube channel called Theoria, Ap no, Theoria Apotheosis or Apotheosis Theoria, the other way around. Anyway, Ken Wheeler. And you'll see how he does all this uh, modeling through his computer and through his um, ferrocell or magnetic viewing film showing how this um, uh, reciprocating processional energy of the Taurus field works. And it works in a 12-ness. We must understand this. So we must go from duality to a 12-ness. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to put the year, the, year, the yearly cycle on that wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this Right? And then from that, we're going to get to this in one step. It's so easy. And, and then this will not be mumbo jumbo. Everyone that watches this presentation will know what this is all about. They can go to an astrological website and test it for themselves to see. And I'll give them some indications. Um, through some of the graphics that I've produced on astrology. And they can, for instance, um, knowing their uh, health weaknesses and their illnesses, they will be able to verify it by going to the chart. Now, just as you would go to an iridologist, a naturopath who looks in your eye, yes. this is the window to the soul. It's the window to your body, your emotions, and your spiritual nature. Okay? Just as you would go to um, a motor mechanic these days who has a computer analysis of how your motor is running, and he will study the waves. And, and so he can verify the condition. He can tell you your third piston is 50% down on energy. You need to change the rings. Uh, the spark plug is um, defective. Or he might say the distributor or your, um, your injection, um, one of the injectors is blocked. Okay? So, and, and, and again, you can even go to your allopathic doctor. And he will also, like a Chinese practitioner, he will get you to stick your tongue out and he will look and see. And, and that's what you're doing here. There's no difference. Only that this, when you put all the other sciences together, iridology, Chinese practitioner, doctor, all the other scientists, they don't bear a candle to this. This has much more in it, as you will see. This can tell you everything, not just about your physical body, it can tell you about your emotions, everything, as you will see, if you just give me a chance. And depending on how good the teacher is, you should be able to explain how this works in an hour or two. Okay? Now, I've wasted a half an hour because I have diverged and digressed with um, explanations that are supportive of this um, um, science of this thesis that I'm going to um, present. Okay, so let's do that first. And what I want to do is I want to get give a cipher to understand how it all works. So what you have is um, in masonry. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, masonry is, well, Freemasonry is different to masonry for a start. And then again, we must remember all organizations that try to do good, whether they are Jehovah's Witnesses, Masons, Freemasons, um, um, any club or organizations, they usually get infiltrated and controlled and they have to toe the party line. This is because they're all registered. 
okay? And so when you register, then you have government rules to abide by. And so what goes out the window is truth. And what comes in is doctrine and dogma. Okay? And so that's why all of these organisations don't agree. Whereas the true science is natural. It's, it's God's science. This is God's science. All the astrology books I've ever read have always attributed the wisdom of astrology to a creator, to God. And some of them call God Jehovah or Allah. The, the uh, Arabic and Persian astrologers, for instance, um, they call this the science of Allah. In fact, the Quran tells you. I've done a presentation dealing with the Quran and how it talks about the 12 heavens. And it talks about Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and it uses those very names. Okay, you can search this. Search online in the Quran and you'll see it talks about the seven planets, the visible seven planets, and the 12 heavens, the 12 signs of the zodiac. <laughs> you see, the Bible, on the other hand, has been sterilized. You've got Jacob and his 12... Um, sons and tribes, Jesus and his 12 apostles. Well, the apostles are the 12 posts. That's why it's called apostles, the silent T, because these were called posts. And Jesus was the son. Why? Because the son is the life giver. It's the savior, rises. It's the risen savior every day. And so if you remove the sun from our solar system, from our cosmos, everything dies. And yeah. so we're not being sun worshippers. We don't look at the visible, physical sun. This is just logical, logical science. Yeah? We, we can, uh, just, if, if we wouldn't have a sun, just 24 hours, two days, and there is no, no life, actually. Exactly. It's vital. It's, look at the plants. They won't grow. Without Tem the sun. Tem temperature probably would go below 100, minus 100 degrees Celsius. Oh, no, it's, it's, we can imagine <laughs> what would happen. Yeah, it's photosynthesis and chlorophyll. Mm. And so what, what the, um, the ancients used to um, pay homage to was the power behind the sun, the one that put the sun there. And in the, in the Mithraic Zoroastrian religion of the Persians, they taught that there were three suns, the physical body of the sun, the emotional body of the sun called the soul. Hence, that's why the soul, the sun is called soul, soul, soul invictus, because it has a soul and it has a psychic body. It has a mental body. And then, of course, there is the spiritual body third part of the sun and that is what they call god because that's the source of the sun and the sun is the most powerful representative of energy that we know it's magnificent magnetism magnificent magnanimous etc so if we take this masonic cipher we'll notice here the eight spoke wheel. Well, that's dealing with the four cardinal points of the cross. You see, spring, summer, autumn, winter, mm -hmm. morning, morning, afternoon, evening, night. And then the ones in between, they are the cross quarter days. May day, May the 1st, in the middle of Taurus. Uh, loaf mass day, August the 1st, in the middle of Leo, summer, spring, summer. Here you have the 1st of November, Halloween, in the middle of autumn, in so, the middle of school. Sun debilitation, yeah? Sorry? Debilitation of sun, yeah? Sun is weak. Uh, in, no, in, it's... Halloween, in, the, in Libra. <clears throat> yeah, it's the fall of the moon yeah libra is the fall of the sun mm -hmm. yes which is a debilitation yes it is okay because the sun exalts in aries and the moon exalts in taurus 
-hmm. So they must have their fall in the yeah. opposite signs. Opposite. Yeah. Libra. Yep. And then Scorpio. And so the other one is February the 1st. Okay. Now, what are these ones? The Cardinal Cross. This is the mm -hmm. Cardinal Cross because it points to the Cardinal signs. Aries, Cancer, the chief cornerstone, Libra, and at the bottom here, down below, Capricorn. And they are the, the equinoxes and the solstitial axis. And every wave works like this. So here you have March the 21st. Beginning of spring. Yes, beauty. New, new life. Mm -hmm. Yes, the blossom. In Vedic astrology, Ashwini start, the first uh, nakshatra Ashwini, which is the Aries, the first degree of Aries. Mm. Yep, the first nakshatra. And then mm. there's 27 nakshatras um, or 27 lunar mansions. In the West, in the tropical astrological system, we have 28. But this is fine. They are still both good systems. Okay? Now, here we have the 21st of June, the, the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. Over here, September 23rd, we have the autumnal equinox in Libra. Okay, the 23rd of June, uh, September, in the Jewish system is called Judgment Day. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, um, the Festival of Tabernacles, the Festival of Booths, Tishri, etc. Nisan, it's coming up now. Nisan 14. Well, that's Aries, the Passover, the Passover lamb. You see, it's all astrological. Yes. Okay. Now, and then the bottom one, tropical point, that's pointing to the 21st of December, the winter solstice. Okay. Now, for all intelligent people, thinking people who have a, uh, an open mind, all of this will make sense with a little bit of meditation and reflection and study. Okay? I don't expect, I know I'm going fast and putting a lot of things together, but in time, if you rewind this presentation, go through it carefully, you'll be the master of understanding energy. And the 12, and the 12 different chromatic kinds of energy. As you will notice, <clears throat> The human body is here. This is one of my graphs on my website. So yes. I'm going to be presenting a lot of my um, graphics, digital graphics that can be turned into posters from my um, website, universaltruthschool.com. You can go there and you can get these digital graphics. They have, they are um, uh, full of, symbolism and wisdom and understanding and if you care to study them you will expand your knowledge of energy and god because all energy has a source and we call that god the source creator the most high and this is how his energy system works it can't work any other way this cannot be the work of the devil because the devil doesn't make anything <laughs> The devil destroys everything. Okay, this is why in the Bible, um, God mocks the devil and he praises his science by the Maseroth by saying, can you tell forth my Maseroth? If you don't know where Taurus is and Orion and the Pleiades, you are ignorant. Okay, so it's basically um, showing how energy works. So you see how... Aries, the cerebrum, is here. Taurus is the cerebellum. Gemini is the lungs. And they all rule the 12 systems of the biology. Okay? Aries is the cerebrospinal and nervous system. Uh, Taurus is the endocrine system. Gemini is the respiratory system. Cancer is the lymphatic and uh, immune system. Leo is the heart. It is the cardiovascular and circulatory system. Virgo is the belly. 
and the appetite. It is the digestion and the excretory system. And I would Digest say also bacteri bacteria flora uh, for Virgo. This is this is the, this is for sure. They losing this uh, this flora very fast. Uh, yes, yes, they do. And most um, and uh, taurines um, suffer from baldness the most. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, they usually go bald in their twenties and thirties, and that's simply because they lack the tissue salt, which there are twelve of. Mm -hmm. And the tissue salt. Um, if you check my graphics, I have all this inf information encoded in them. The salt for Virgoans, the Schussler tissue salt would be potassium sulfate. <clears throat> All Virgoans are deficient in that salt. And the next two salts, Libra, sodium phosphate, and Scorpio, calcium sulfate. Because they have nine of the 12 tissue salts fully developed from their mother's womb. But when they are born on the ninth month, they are deficient in the salt that their sign is okay so if you're a virgo and, and you're listening right now and you're male and you're bald try some potassium sulfate okay now libra libra is the kidneys the two scales are the two kidneys right at the center of your body that's where the sine wave is here libra is the seventh sign in september which means seventh sign Okay, now this should not surprise because we are taught that it is the ninth month, but it's not really astrologically, it's the seventh month. So, Libra rules the renal system and the urinary system. Okay, Scorpio is the reproductive system, the generative system. Sagittarius, the hips, is the muscular system. Capricorn is the skeletal system. Aquarius are the 12 meridians. The Chinese acupuncturists know about these. There are 12 meridians that are connected to the 12 cranial nerves and the 12 nerves in the solar plexus. Okay. Um, and then we come to Pisces, which is the um, integumentary system. Let me just check how to say that. I'm embarrassed. And no, it's the Pisces is connected to mouth, mouth and feet. Yeah. Um, yes, Pisces is also the nerves. Um, that's it. Integumentary system. Okay, which is the skin. All right. So I just wanted to pronounce that correctly because I was, um, when it comes to skin, there are many um, different Greek and Latin uh, words and I just want to be sure. So there are the, the 12 uh, systems um, corresponding. And so why I'm mentioning this is because when you go through a, a chart, now this one's Elvis Presley's chart, um, when you come to these red lines, uh, these are what's called oppositions. There's two kinds of red lines. There's the square, 90 degrees, and there's the opposition, which is 120 degrees, uh, sorry, 180 degrees. Now, the oppositions are the worst kind of energy. They are disharmonious energy. And this is the energy is cold and dry, whereas the square is hot and dry. Okay, now the blue lines, there are two kinds of those, and they are harmonious because they go from um, element to element. For, for instance, from fire to fire, water to water, and earth to earth, air to air, etc. And they are 120 degrees and they are hot and moist. Okay, so the opposition is cold and dry, which is Saturnian. The square is hot 
and dry, which is Martian, Mars, and those are both malefics. Now, the trine, 120 degrees, this is healthy. There won't be a problem here. As you can see, it's pointing to Virgo, which we just learnt mm -hmm. is the um, digestive system. So Elvis Presley, we can pretty much deduce had a, a good digestive system, okay? Um, relatively. We're not going to make assessments on his health. We're just going to pick this chart and to show how you can check um, your own health and be your own doctor. As um, uh, the Hippocratic Oath teaches, he, he taught that if a medic or a, a doctor is not an astrologer, he is not worthy to be called a yes. medic. Uh, he said this. Okay? Uh, hmm. Yes. The full oath includes that, which of course the allopathic medic, medical profession has excluded. He, he said also that uh, if, if the doctor doesn't know uh, medical astrology, he, he must be crazy to, uh, to cure people, yeah? Because yes. what he means exactly, uh, it's too big risk to cure somebody without astrology, without know this all energies, because we can't put everybody to one bag. Uh, so so it, for one person, these minerals will help, but for the other person, uh, it could be something uh, bad for him, yeah? for his uh, stomach or for his digestion system. Skin. Yes, that's right. And, and, and the reason being is because these planets are active energies. Some of them are destructive, like Saturn and Mars, as we just saw with their, with their um, aspects. These are called aspects. Yes. Um, and some of them are really good, like the blue, the, the ones that um, generate the trine energy that's jupiter hot and moist i'll explain what the four humors are about in a minute they are the universal elements just as we have the natural elements uh fire earth air and water we also have four universal elements hot and cold which are active and dry and moist which which are the passive humors or elements. Okay, so um, this 60 degree blue line, that's called a sextile, and that's a Venetian, uh, hot and moist, or warm, tending to warm and moist aspect. And these blue ones, blue shift, are healthy, whereas these ones generate health problems. Now, as you can see here, cancer, which is also related to digestion, but it is the lymphatic and immune system. We can see here a lot of stress. Also the skeletal system, um, Capricorn. So we can see here, and later on what we'll do is we'll go to the specific degree, which is Pluto, 25 degrees. And we'll find that there is a specific ailment associated with all the degrees along the ecliptic. And it's an unfailing science. I've done the chart of thousands of people and mm -hmm. isolated all of their um, um, medical uh, deficiencies and weaknesses um, with about a 90% strike rate. Okay. Why is that? Well, Simply because when you're dealing with energy, you don't, you, you're looking at something two dimensional here and you're looking at limited information. Okay. So, although that might look very nasty to um, uh, that opposition to the untrained eye, it might not be that bad because Pluto might have the same humors, hot and dry, cold and moist, as Cancer. And so it alleviates, mitigates that opposition. So we're going to um, also deal with that, okay? We're gonna talk about um, uh, some of those aspects and how that works, just so that um, when we're looking at this, 
we can get a practical advantage from this, even just being a beginner, okay? Now, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the ecliptic and we're gonna stretch it out over the board. So what we do is we draw an equator like this and we draw the Tropic of Cancer, just like our map showed us. And the Tropic of Cap Capricorn always below. And then we put a sine wave in, which is the ecliptic of the sun. Okay? So, these are the... Uh, the cardinal points of every way, all right? So we spring, summer, autumn, winter, morning, uh, afternoon, evening, night. So what we can do now is to make it sort of more circular, um, we can, we can um, make it into a wheel. And what we've got now, is that it's very important to understand. So it's a year, but it has many things in it. It has the human body in it, and you would have the head. Uh, let me see, I've got a bigger one of these. So this, the, my graphics are high resolution. Um, they're $20, they're $20 each, but uh, I have about, I think I have 11, 9 or 11, I forget now. And you can get them all for $100, all right? So what that means is you will have graphs, graphs that you can go to the printer and put up on your wall, like this one, all right? So what I'm going to do is you can see, as you can see, the body goes in there, okay? And so you will see that um, there's also, um, for instance... Aries is a fire sign. So you see the tetrahedron. Here you see the hexahedron. Octahedron. Dodecahedron for water. That's air, octahedron. And earth is the hex. It's a no-brainer. When you think about these things, you, you see the analogy. See, in science, they say there's solid, liquid, gas, and radiance. Yes. Well, in astrology, we say solid is earth, liquid is water, uh, gas is air, and radiance is fire, plasma. So when science talks about li um, solid, the four states of matter, it's here. Because those four states are produced in every toroidal wave expression. And this is how... In 30 degree segments, all waves work, whether you believe it or not, or whether you understand it or not. And so here will be fire tetrahedron. And so there are, there are five platonic solids. There's also another one called a um, dodeca, which means 12. See, tetra means four. That little pyramid shape has four sides. Hex means six. The cube has six sides. Faces, I should say. Octa means eight. And the octahedron has eight. It corresponds to air. Um, icosahedron, ikosi in Greek means 20. So it has 20 um, triangle faces on it. Whereas the dodecahedron has 12 pentagrams around it, like the soccer ball. And it's the master because dodeca means 12. And it corresponds to the fifth element called ether, which is ethereal or quintessential. Okay, and that's how this science works. It's the science of light or sound or energy. These are the 12 chromatic notes. Okay, now, so what we have in astrology, this is the eastern point. 
the ascendant. Six o'clock. So we could say this is six o'clock, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve midday. They call this the MC. Not master of ceremony. <laughs> I, I know that you would say this. <laughs> and so the MC divides what is AM and PM mm -hmm. because because it's called AM is anti meridian. That's the meridian. Yes. So this so time. in time we have a PM AM depends on time. Everything AM is over here from here. 12 midnight try and get that in mm, it's going to be a bit hard isn't it there's 12 midnight this is called the imc i m c this is called the mc this mm -hmm. is called the tc because it's descending when the sun hits the four o'clock 4 p.m and then five and six, usually, every day, it descends from your vision, okay? So that's the eastern point. And so you can see that this is obviously a 24-hour clock. It's obvious. 1 o'clock, 1 p.m., 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13? Yeah, can do. But let's start with 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3, 4, 5, 6 a.m. So you see, this is the meridian, anti meridian is a.m., post meridian after this point here is. PM. And that's what you have here. So as you can see, um, Elvis Presley was born around about three to four in the morning. Uh, Marlon Brando if I can find the chart now. 4.35 4 in the morning, Elvis Presley, 4.35. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so his son, his son is in the second house, and I'll explain the houses in a minute. That's the only thing I've got left to explain. You, second so, house, yes. Yeah, the houses are different to the signs. Once, once you understand that here there are 12 signs, and as they turn, clockwise every day they are they are found to be in the 12 houses okay and so here below the ascendant this will be the first house so we're going to go we're going to go like this hopefully i'm not going to confuse people first house second third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve because we have to understand this. And you'll see that in here, you will see the number one there. See mm -hmm. number one? Yes. Number two. Number three. So, so let's just have a look. Th those are the houses. You see the houses are on the outside ring? And then the signs are 30 degrees each inside. So we start from Aries, as I said, fire, mm -hmm. red. So you see the, th the three fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius are red. It's all color-coded perfectly for the beginner. That's why I use this website, okay? It's called um, astrotheme.com. Now, um, and so you see the second house is here. So the first house is always here, it never moves. But the first sign, the first sign Aries, that can be anywhere, depending on what time you're born. Yeah. Okay, it can be here. Aries can be in the 10th house. It can be in the 11th house. 
because the signs, even though they are ordered anti-clockwise, they are rotating clockwise every day. Okay? So on the inside, you have the signs going anti-clockwise, and but the houses, the first house will always be here, and it's called the rising sign, the first house, the ascendant. So if people ask you in astrology, what is your ascendant sign? Well, that's the sign that's pointing here. So, so Marlon Brando has a Sagittarius ascendant. Now, so Taurus is earth, Gemini is air, Cancer is water. So you can see the three water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces are blue. Is it the Malon Planto chart? Santo? Yes. Malon yes, Planto. it is. Mm -hmm. Marlon Brando. Okay. Now, so, <clears throat> all right. So, now, um, just so you don't get confused, we did have the body going around that way, and that's how my most of my graphics go. Now, of course, we we are just we've just been explaining that the signs actually go around anti-clockwise. It really doesn't matter because they're graph they're just graphics. Okay? But when you set up when you set up any graphic, you can do it this way. Or you can do it the astrological way where the signs are going anti-clockwise and so, so are the houses. All right? So what we'll have is those houses are fixed. And so someone born at, in, at 4.30 like um, Elvis Presley here, as you can see, there's 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So anyone with the sun below that line there, ascendant, descendant line, they are nocturnals. They were born at night. Uh, Marlon Brando, uh, 11 uh, p.m. he born, yeah, at night. Was he? Let's have a look. Yeah, 11 p.m. In Omaha. Well, there it is. Well, there's 11. Hang on. Well, there's his... Uh, so this, this MC is a little bit distorted because of the... The houses don't always have the same degrees yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's called the Placidus system. They're not equal houses of 30 degrees, just like the equal signs. Okay. So um, this line here, this one never moves. It's always like that. Mm -hmm. But because we have to move the MC, we see it's pointing to where? About 11 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so. That's, they're both nocturnals because both, both their suns are below this line. This is the night. This is the daytime. Okay. Now, so <clears throat> as, as the sun goes round daily, this is what happens. All of these planets go through the houses. And all of these houses have different meanings. Yes. If, a planet is, if a planet is here, for instance, the sun, this rising sign, this is all about the individual. Yeah. The individual's personality. This is all information, the first house, about um, the health, the body, the personality, the character of the individual. I am. Ego. The second one is about your money, I guess. Let's keep it simple. Um, I do have a beautiful chart. Uh, I'll grab that in a minute. Dealing with the house meanings. Just let me have a bit of a drink of my... That's why Taurus... Uh... Taurus is always connected with the money because he's, he's, he's really, he really wants to be secure, yeah? Yes. Second house. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> that's it. 
a lot of banks uh, has a statue of the Taurus uh, in front of the bank as a symbol of money. Yeah, nah, yes it is. Okay, let's have a look at this for a minute. Mm -hmm. This is very handy. Um, yes, it is. It's money, Taurus, the bull market. Yes, yes, bull market. See? Yep, uh, cash cow. <laughs> All of the yeah. all the bull words. It's all about money. Yeah. yeah. So, if we start with Aries, we have the word here: um, appearance. There you go. So it gives you the appearance. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, grab a book which shows the appearance. Uh, I did have it out here. Just bear with me one tick. I'll grab that book. No problem. I'm not going to find it. I, I was I was prepared, but um, no, no. Just press break. Uh, press uh, pause, brother. Sorry, I have to find the book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> if we start, here is here is a um, uh, a graphic. Mm -hmm. It's not mine, uh, which shows you the, the meanings of the houses. So. Just to keep it simple, yeah. um, in Aries we have appearance, acquisition, Gemini, uh, that's Taurus, uh, acquisition, Gemini is communications, yeah. third house. Can cancer, yeah? Third, third house, third house. Yeah. Third house, yep. Elvis uh, has a Rahu North not in third, third house. Yes. Uh, security. Uh, cancer, the fourth house. Mm -hmm. Why why they have cancer in the fourth house is because the signs actually do correspond with <clears throat> with the houses. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Leo, <clears throat> creativity. Um, Virgo, operation. Libra partners and marriage. Venus, yeah. Scorpio death. Uh, Sagittarius wisdom. Uh, Capricorn achievement. Uh, Aquarius uh, fellowship. And uh, Pisces. Pisces privacy. Okay. So now. The first house, as I said, deals with your appearance. Well, um, <clears throat> that's what we're going to have a look at in this book called Dance of the Zodiac. A brilliant by... book. Hmm? Sorry? Brilliant book. Amazing book. It is. It's a beautiful book. And it gives pictures of, of um, the signs and how to identify the signs. Yeah. So here, here you have all the Taurians. I've done a presentation on this. Uh, on my YouTube channel called Mr. Astro Theology. That's the, uh, the handle of my YouTube channel. One word, Mr. Astro Theology. Yeah. Um, there's your uh, Aries. That's you. Uh, yep, exactly. I've got, I've got one in Taurus. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you Taurian? Taurian. Yeah, I mean, Aquarius, uh, Zodiac, but... Uh, I've got a lot of uh, Taurus influence in other aspects it houses. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at Elvis Presley, for instance. Yeah. We can see he has Rahu, the North Node. Mm -hmm. 
and Venus, Mercury and the sun in the second house. There they are. Okay. Now, this is this is you. Let's just keep it simple. Yeah. You. Yeah. This is what you you have. Your possessions, your money, your wealth. As you can see, he was very, very wealthy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, North Node, he was a multimillionaire. Okay. Yeah. This is your communication. Let's keep it simple. There's many other meanings here. For instance, brothers and sisters, education, yeah. uh, short trips, but hands. It's multi. It's multi-layered. The houses have many meanings. Many, but many. These basic fundamental meanings. Okay? Some, some people, some people yeah. having that this is only short information, but this is it's a really big information and sometimes not connected to, to each other, connected to the house. Uh, that's why. That's why it's not only when somebody thinks that the, this house is particular for, for you as a, as, a, as an ego, but it's, it's more meaning. It has a That's thing. right. That's right. This is your home, home life. Here is your pleasure and fun and good luck and... Um, uh, Children. All Yep, children as well. Yep. Mm. Here is your health or illness. A lot of doctors, a lot of doctors has this uh, house connected. Yeah, the doctors, uh, the yep. people who are interested in medicine and uh, diets, supplements, uh, they have a strong sixth house. Mm. Yep, yep, and seventh, because this is the house of illness. This is the house of health yeah. as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, not many people know that. A uh, lot, lot of astrologers don't consider this to be the house of health. But if you study Bonatti, uh, the 12th century astrologer, he clearly indicates this is about health, mm -hmm. philosophy, um, uh, clairvoyance, um, medicine as well. Um, Transport? Uh, sorry? Transport? Cells? Is it not connected to seventh house? Um, yeah, medium trips, mm. I think. Uh, no, medium trips are here. Short trips, medium trips, long trips. This one, I don't think is transports here. Uh, third house, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Death. Um, let's call this one religion. Wisdom, faith. Uh, all sorts of transcendental experiences like dreams and visions, etc. Mm -hmm. This is the career, the public life. Public, yeah. Oh, public life here. Yeah. Whoops. Public social life. You see, pe people with a lot of. Uh, well, Elvis Presley has Jupiter in the 11th house. He had a lot of friends. And Jupiter is the planet of generosity. And he would always buy homes, cars, property for his friends. Mm. Well, that's clearly, you can see the most generous planet, Jupiter, mm. in that house. And this is the house of, say, let's call it, um, well, privacy. Uh, no, let's call it... Um, uh, Illumination, uh, enlightenment, um, privacy, let's call it hidden enemies, okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got um, enemies, friends, enemies. Let's just keep it simple. There's many more meanings. All right, so the reason why I want to, these are all fields of activity. And when certain planets find themselves in certain of these houses, they activate the meaning of it differently. For instance, Venus, if you have Venus in the seventh house, the house of marriage, for instance, well, you're more than likely, depending on whether it's a male sign, fire or air, which is a giving, 
or a receiving sign, cancer, um, <clears throat> sorry, water or earth, um, shows that you are either receiving a lot of love, Venus, or giving a lot of love. Now, if you have Jupiter here, it means you're very generous. There will be a generous flow depending on the sign, whether you're giving or receiving. Mm -hmm. If you have Saturn here, well, you'll bring Saturn's energies. Mm. Uh, Pluto will be destructive and transformative. Um, the moon will be emotional and sensitive and motherly. So people who have the moon here tend to be motherly in yeah. their marriages and in their partnerships. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the signs, they also go anti-clockwise around this anti-clockwise circle. And so what, what happens then is as it goes around, uh, your head, which, was, which is Aries in your body, as it finds itself, the cerebrum, wherever, it, wherever you're born, as, as, as the clock goes around clockwise every day, sun rises here, midday is here, six o'clock is here. So as that goes around, I should do it this other way, because that's not the right way. So there's the head, um, there's the neck, there's the arms, the twins are the two arms, by the way. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> so as those signs are going around and the planets daily, right, you're getting ready to be born and all of a sudden you're born and that's it. That's how your chart will look if you're born at that particular time, which looks like about 4 p.m. in the afternoon because you go by the sun. The sun is the timekeeper of the day. The sun is called Horus. Horus is an anagram for hours. So when you're asking what hour is it, you're asking what horizon is it? Where is Horus? Because this is the belt of Horus, the, yes, yes. the zodiac. It's, it's Horus's belt, the hour. And so now what you have, what you find here is the head, the cerebrum, is here and that's the whole body going around that way and there is the, the feet here so we see that the head is in the public arena so in other words this this person's cerebrum mm -hmm. is dwelling in the tenth house which is dealing with public life so you see that the person in their public image um, they are putting their mind they're putting their cerebrum energy into the public life. If, on the other hand, Aries is to be found down here in, in the home, you see that the person is doing a lot of their thinking at home. They use their cerebrum a lot and get a lot of pro productivity in this house because their son, uh, sorry, their sign Aries is here. Okay, so this is one way to look at it that a lot of astrologers don't really look at. They don't sort of look at the sign and how it corresponds to the parts of the body and how those parts correspond to which house. So if you want to know where your heart is in astrology, you look for the sign Leo because as we saw before, Leo is the cardiovascular system. So if you want to know where your heart is, if Leo is here, it means your heart is with partners and marriage. If Leo is here, it means your heart is with deep occult knowledge, deep hidden knowledge, and also carnal knowledge. It's a sexual, it's the eighth house corresponding to the eighth sign, Scorpio, which is the reproductive. So reproduction happens here the kind of creative um, energy that is reproductive or generative. It's where people create things anew. So if Leo is here, it means your heart is with religion and dreams and visions and wisdom. If Leo is here, your heart is in the public area. If it's here, it's with your friends. If it's here, it's with enlightenment, 
and transcendental in the subconscious and the superconscious and hidden things. If it's here, it means your heart is with you. Your it's your life. Your um, you're involved in sports and activity and your pleasure is with you. If the Leo sign is here, it means your heart is with making money and being wealthy and having a lot of security, financial, etc. If it's here, it means you have a big heart towards your brothers and sisters because this is the brothers and sisters house. Now, these are just side things, yes. okay, because... Ultimately, we're going, to, we're going to show how we can benefit from this medically because everyone knows their own medical weaknesses, okay? Some, yeah. people, um, some people with poor eyesight. Well, I, I'll show you how you can find uh, poor eyesight, defective eyesight in a minute. And one way is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the sign of vision and seeing. So, <clears throat> as you can see here, um, there are no planets in that Sagittarius for Elvis Presley, and there are no bad red lines pointing to there. So, eyesight should be pretty good. Okay, that's just looking superficially. There are many other check up, check things that you can check. Just as a doctor doesn't say, oh, you've got a cough, therefore you have uh, pneumonia, or you have the flu. No, he needs five or six symptoms. If he sees you've got a sore throat, you get a headache, you're perspiring, uh, you've got a lot of phlegm, you've got a runny nose, you're tired, well, then he'll say a correct diagnosis because he has many symptoms. Yes. So you don't, you don't just look at one thing and, and say, oh, Sagittarius doesn't have any uh, bad aspects to it. There's no uh, harmful planets in there. Therefore, this guy should have great sight. No, there are other things to look at, okay? Now, so before we proceed, and there you go, there's, there's the same, um, this is a very ancient uh, sine wave here, showing all the energies along the ecliptic, of every sign, any sine wave, and how it corresponds to the human body, okay? Aries at the top, Pisces at the feet. Let us move on. Now, I want to also show two more of my graphics. Uh, this one here is the graphics of the houses, not the signs, the houses. Nice. And of course, we said before that they do correspond to each other. All right? So, um, so Aries... See, in my graphics, I've put the symbol for Aries here and Taurus here and Gemini. First sign, second sign, corresponding to first house, second house. Now, you see the yellow houses, they are called angular and they correspond to the cardinal signs. They have most of the strength and are dealing with the now. Okay, the succulent, the middle uh, houses, the second, the fifth, the eighth, and the eleventh, they are medium strength houses. Okay, and the red ones, they are called cadent. Cadent means to fall in Latin, and they are weak. Okay, and you see the body now in this graphic is going the other way. Why? Well, because it's corresponding now, the body parts to the actual houses. It needs and to the house from head, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this graphic shows you how the angular houses corresponding to the tropical signs are the strongest. And they have to do with um, um, things that are acute. Um, the succident houses, so acute illnesses, the succident houses have a fixed, they have to do with chronic illnesses and the future, as you can see, future. So now, future and past. All the red houses, cadent houses, are dealing with the past and hidden things. 
dark and hidden things. Okay, and they are the weakest. So strong, middle strength, weak. Strong, middle, weak. Strong, middle, weak. Strong, middle, weak. Now, inside all of these signs, here is another one of my graphics, which is called the sink rotor. And as you can see, the body is going the other way now. So you've got Aries, Aries over here, Cancer over here, Libra and Capricorn. And so all the signs are in here. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Now, on the outside, it gives you the, every degree, or not every, but all the degrees where there are specific illnesses. And we're just going to cross-check some of those with the charts that we have here. Mm -hmm. and, and so, <clears throat> but what you have inside um, every sign, there are three deacons. A deacon is 10 degrees. So every sign is 30 degrees. 10 degrees is a third of a sign. Now, the first deacon is like the strongest part of every sign. The middle deacon is the middle strength again corresponding with this chart here and the last deacon of every sign is the weakest and so what you'll find is that if a planet for instance if a planet is in the first degrees of Aries well that's going to denote acute illnesses come and go if it's in the third degree of a house uh, sorry, if it's in the second <laughs> um, deacon of a house or sign, it denotes more fixed and chronic illnesses, stubborn, not easily movable. But if the planet is in the third deacon of a sign, that is mutable, so it's changing. It's something that is not chronic, not acute, but it's, it's more vague. Okay, and so, um, and it has mixed energies with, uh, with it. All right, so again, you can tell um, as this works, um, every quadrant, the first part is strong, second is middle strength, and then the last is weak. Well, the same happens in each sign. The first deacon is strong, and the second one is middle strength, and the last one is weak. Okay, so what we have here, this is another one of my graphics and it shows you there's a lot of information in here. Okay, we have uh, on the outer concentric ring, we have the terms. I won't explain what that is, but astrologers who do astrology know what the terms are. Every sign of the zodiac um, has... Um, various degrees which are given to one of the five planets jupiter saturn mars mercury and venus all right every sign and they are indiscriminate they're not set degrees that sometimes eight sometimes fives four three it's it's indiscriminate okay so those are the terms then there's other information which i won't go into there's a lot of on the inner ring here, you have the tissue salts. So it tells you which of the salts that you have, that you need. And so for instance, um, uh, for instance, Elvis Presley being Capricorn, uh, his three salts that are deficient would be Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces because those are the three that weren't developed because he was born in Capricorn as we discussed before. Yes. Now, so I, I would be saying to take these three salts, uh, calcium phosphate for the bones, Capricorn, mm -hmm. uh, sodium chloride for Aquarius and the 12 meridians to electrify them, and iron phosphate for Pisces, for the skin, uh, for the endocrine system and for the nerves, which Pisces rules all of. Um, and, and if it's with, if it's also, um, 
water sign. It will also have to do with the uh, lymphatic system as cancer, the other water sign rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, So um, that would be iron phosphate. But we see here uh, Uranus in Aries, and you can see here the red lines. This mm -hmm. is called a T-square in astrology. A T-square is a red triangle like this. And so um, this Elvis Presley, you can see, uh, probably had a lot of uh, migraines and headaches from time to time or all the time because Uranus in Aries would actually stir up the cerebrum. And so the salt there would be potassium phosphate. So because there's a red line pointing to there, you can already see that this is also a weak sign and needs, needs strengthening. Okay. So, so you would need those four salts. Also, um, Pluto retrograding in cancer, calcium fluoride. That would be handy to take that salt. That will help the spleen energy, um, the stomach and digestion. It will also help the skin and the lymphatic system and the immune system. Okay, calcium fluoride, great for the skin, nails, teeth, not sodium fluoride, which is a poison, deliberately, calcium fluoride. Now, there's also another red line pointing to the kidneys and the um, urinary, urinary system, uh, Libra. So sodium phosphate, that will strengthen the kidneys. And because Mars, Mars is in Libra, Mars does not like Libra. The, these are not compatible energies. Mars is too hot and uh, dry, whereas um, air, Libra, is hot and moist. So it will dry up the kidneys. And, and you'll find if you go to a Chinese practitioner, he will give you moistening foods because your tongue will indicate dryness in the kidneys. <clears throat> so definitely, definitely here, I would say a kidney weakness with Elvis Presley. And it could be the right kidney, the yang, or the left, the yin. So you would have to make further searches. I'm only doing something very superficial here, okay? You can actually find out which kidney. And, and even a, an iridologist, he can see it in your eye. Because around your eye, if you look at the Jensen graphic for iridology, you will see that it all starts at the top, the top of the eye, which mm -hmm. starts at the top of your body, the cerebrum. And then it goes around all through the body. So the eye, this is like the eye of your soul. All right? And the other one will be Scorpio. Scorpio is calcium sulfate. You can see here that he has, uh, or he had a, a weakness in the reproductive system or in the hormones, etc. Okay? So, now, I just want to be a little bit more specific with some of these details. So, let's say, for instance, if we go to the 12th degree of Mars, of, of Libra, where Mars is causing a lot of damage in the um, urinary, urinary tract, Mm -hmm. and in the kidneys. Let's go to our sync rotor here now and see what that affects. So I'm gonna see if there's any specific degree there. So we go to kid, um, the kidneys here and we find jaund jaundice of the kidney and renal pelvis, okay? So, and um, in this concentric ring in the middle, the thickest, widest ring, I have the three deacons. As you can see here, you can see there are three deacons per sign, mm -hmm. and each deacon is dealing, so there's 36 deacons around the ecliptic. They are all dealing with different organs in the body. So, in that 12th degree, we're dealing with
I can't see it. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen. Can I share my screen here? Yep. Yes. There it is. Mm -hmm. um, what do we do? We're going to go to this. And there goes my screen sharing. So, all right. Now, this is the graphic I just showed you called the sync rotor. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to go over here to this area here where is the kidneys. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to look at this this part here can you see this part yep. here mm -hmm. this is this is the thickest and the widest concentric ring and it's showing you here the bowels so you can see here quite clearly that the middle deacon where elvis presley has mars on the 12th degree um it's dealing with bowels so that could be constipation well, why would you say that? Well, because Mars is hot and dry, and that would, you know, that would dry up the bowels and the intestines, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to look at another um, point in the chart. All right, let's have a look at. Um, all right, the Sun in 17 degrees Capricorn. So we go down to Capricorn here. And we see there's nothing, yes, there is. No, there's nothing specific to the 10th degree, okay? Alcoholism, but, that is. Hmm? Well, that's 11 degrees. No, he, he had the problem with alcohol, yeah, Elvis? I think so. Actually, I got it wrong. <laughs> it was a 17th degree. Diabetes. So it looks like he might have been um, hiding some... Um, condition of diabetes and the deacon is the bones see here mm -hmm. bones the first deacon is the spine the second deacon is the joints let's go around here let's have a look at the deacons aquarius first deacon arms second legs third movement pisces first coordination Second deacon, nerves. Third deacon, reflexes. Aries, the skull. Well, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. And look at this, coordination, because you walk with your feet in Pisces. And the nerve endings, they are all in your feet. And your reflexes, they are in the feet. Mm -hmm. Here is Aries, the skull, first deacon. Second one, migraines. Third one, concentration. Taurus, nose, throat, ears. Gemini, smell, lungs, speech. Makes sense. Uh, the third house and the third sign is dealing with communication, speech. Uh, cancer, the skin. First deacon. Body fat, third deacon. Third deacon, touch. Interesting, the senses. Uh, Leo, the heart, second deacon, blood, third, circulation. Um, Virgo, appetite, stomach, digestion. We've already seen this, remember? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Libra, metabolism, bowels, excrement. Uh, Scorpio, sexuality, genitals, hormones. Uh, Sagittarius, far sight, eyes, near sight, and we did Capricorn. All right, now those are the general areas, the 36 general areas of the body. But if we go around, starting at Aries, we see all the different specific degrees. Now, I got most of these degrees from um, Judith Hill's book on um, medical astrology. So I want to give the uh, credit and um, um, the, um, um, the due to her. I'm trying to find the right word, but I just can't think. It's I'm very tired right now. Um, but uh, the credit, okay. So um, her book on medical astrology is absolutely a, a must read. Okay. Which now, which one? The the Judah. Judah Hill book? Judith Hill, yes. 
All right. Now, um, let me just go back to my graphics. You, you're still seeing me, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And I want to go now to one more graphic before I finish. Okay. Why? Why? Because I want um, people to get the most practical benefit from this two hour presentation. Now, as I said, every house has three different deacons and three different triplicity rulers. All right. So for instance, if you have um, your first house has Leo in it, well, Leo is fire and the, um, the triplicity rulers for fire, the graph down the bottom tells you the day rulers mm -hmm. uh, for fire. There's Leo here. So the first one is the sun, then Jupiter, then Saturn. And so that means when you look for the sun in the chart, the sun um, is dealing with, here's the first part of the first house. Mm -hmm. And it signifies the health of the individual for the first part of his life. Then the second one is dealing with the second part of his life. And then the third ruler, which is what Saturn will be dealing with the third part. So if the sun is in a cadent house, that means the individual will have um, the first part of their life, their health will be weak. Then if Jupiter, the ruler of the second part of their life from 30 to 60, if he is in a um, angular house, that means that for the middle part of their life, their health will improve. And then Saturn takes over the last part of the life. And so if Saturn is, say, in a cadent house, that means the health will deteriorate again because the cadent houses are weak. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, the second house is dealing with the assets for the first part of the life, the first ruler. So let's say Leo is in the second house, right? Well, then, and the cusp is pointing to Leo. Well, then we know that um, if that person was born by day and he has a diurnal chart, well, then the sun, we have to look for the sun to find out whether the first part of the life, the person will have a lot of money or will be poor. And if the sun is in a uh, cadent house, well, that means that um, for the first part, for the first 30 years of the individual's life, they will be struggling with money. Okay. Now, if the other rulers are in better houses, well, then the, sec the middle part of the life and the last part of the life will pick up. Now, the third house, the three triplicity rulers are dealing with, um, the first one is younger siblings. Uh, the second ruler is middle siblings. Uh, the third one is older siblings. Okay. Now, I've seen that the other way around. I've seen the first one dealing with older and the last one dealing with younger. But I think this is accurate, okay? Now, the fourth house. The first ruler um, will be dealing with fathers. So if you want to find out information about your father, well, you look for the first ruler, triplicity ruler of the fourth house. And if you want to find out if you're going to have homes and lands and inheritance from your father, you look at the second ruler. And then for the end of matters, uh, prison and selling, the third ruler. Now for the fifth house, the first ruler is children. That's information about your children. The second one is about pleasures and delights. And the third one is about um, legates, which means important people mm. all right now do you want to read the third one the first yes. ruler what uh, the first ruler is infirmity recovery mm. the second is employees and the third one is uh, prisons animals flocks usefulness yep, yep. exactly so you can see that uh, this is another one dealing with prisons. Um, but, but if you want to know about the health of the individual, 
where you look for the first triplicity ruler of the sixth house. Now, when you come to the seventh house, if you want to find out if the individual is going to be good with their partners, you look for the first ruler of that house. Then you want to see if they're good, if they're um, uh, um, fighting a lot with their partners, you look for the second ruler. And then the third ruler is de dealing with uniting with others and commingling. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do you want to read the uh, eighth house, please? Yeah. Uh, inheritance, partners, assets, resources, ancient thing, old matters. Uh, and that. Uh, the third, or the first, yes, the, sorry, the first, the first is that, the second is ancient things, <clears throat> old matters, and the third is uh, partners, assets, and resources of the eighth house. Exactly. All right, and then the ninth house is pilgrimage or traveling, long journeys. Mm -hmm. um, um, faith and religion is the second one. And the third one is uh, dreams and visions, astrology, omens, truth and lying. And when we come to the public life, the 10th house, the first rule is dealing with work and the highest station in work. Mm -hmm. um, the second one is voice and courage in the workplace. And the third one is stability and durability. So if you're looking at employing someone, and you want to find out whether they have stability, right. Well, what do you do? Well, you look at the third ruler of their 10th house. Now, the uh, 11th house, the first one is trust. The second one is friends. And the third one is the usefulness and the benefit of your friends. All right. Now, the last house, the first ruler is enemies. The third one is labors and animals for riding. Well, notice that the opposite, the third one in the sixth house is uh, animals and flocks, not animals for riding. So you see they're right opposite each other. Yeah. Okay. And the sixth is connected with 12th house and we have a prison in six and 12th also it's a, it's a prison. It's a, it's a place of... Uh, mm, yes. Yes, the 12th house is prison. Separation, yeah. Separation, yes it is. And those, those are the houses where you find prison and end of matters. Those are usually cadent houses. And the cadent houses are, remember, hidden things. Hidden. So when you're in prison, you're hidden away. Now, just one more graphic I want to show. Mm -hmm. um, I'll share my screen again. Um, this one here, this one is the one that's dealing with all the, um, cell salts. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So Aries, you can see the salt for Aries is, um, uh, K3P, which is, um, Cali, uh, Cali no, no, We can see, we can see, you have to open once again, mineral chart. Santo. Now, oh, yes, I can see now. Mm -hmm. Okay. K3PO4. All, right. All right. This is a very, very handy chart and graphic that um, uh, that is available on my website. Now, my website is um, Universal Truth School. Because I know a lot of people will be writing to me saying, where do I go? How do I get these? And no, we'll, put, say, we'll put the links on the, on, on the video also di directly okay. to your website. Thank you. And so you go here, you go to um, sync biosyncretism graphics. Yes. Okay. And there's all the charts, all the ones I've shown. And there they are, and um, you can get all those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, there are. There's eleven, and they are. You can get all of those for a hundred dollars. You know that would be the best way to get them. Anyway, I'm just showing that where you can get them. Now let's have a look at Aries. So 
calcium phosphate is the salt. There it is, caliphos, potassium yeah. phosphate. Not calcium. What am I talking about? Caliphos. That's not calcium. It's potassium. Potassium. Uh, and that's dealing with the cerebrum, the spinal cord, the sensory nerves, uh, the face, the lower jaw, um, torus, the liver, the gallbladder, the neck, the throat, the cerebellum, sodium sulfate, uh, Gemini, bronchial tubes, uh, pleur uh, pleura glands, shoulder, hands, lungs, all fibres and tissues, potassium chloride. Cancer, elastic tissue, breast, stomach, spleen, calcium fluoride, Leo, heart, motor nerves. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the motor nerves are also in Taurus. They are. Okay. Uh, back and sides near the heart, magnesium phosphate. Okay. Uh, I won't continue on. There you go. Um, Virgo, solar plexus, bowels, etc. And <laughs> Here at the bottom, it gives you all the information on the particular salt and the body parts. Okay, this is a very important graphic for medical astrology. Yeah. Um, now, did I see anything else that is worthy of sharing? No, not at this stage. Okay, let's go back to my presentation and we'll finish off. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any questions there, brother? Uh, yes, we can say uh, about two sentences about Elvis or Marlon Brando uh, profession uh, this, um, about the influence of the zodiacs uh, planets. Why, why then done this? I saw I saw in Elvis Presley uh, Moon in Aquarius. Uh, moon in Aquarius uh, indicates uh, uh, that he is very um, keen to music and has the ability. Um, that he feels music, yeah, very good. Yep, yep. Moon, moon, okay. uh, which is connected to the mind, and also I saw in Vedic astrology, Danishta. This is kind of Aquarius, Saturn in Danishta, Saturn uh, in uh, Aquarius. Uh, Danishta symbolized uh, the drums, uh, the, the music instruments, also. Uh, and Merlon Brando, he see, I saw his. Uh, uh, Rahu in uh, Ten House, which is the North Knot in Ten House. Okay, let me show that. Go again. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at? Is it, who is it? Uh, this Marlon chap? Brando. Marlon Brando, okay. Mm -hmm. so, what, so, what were you saying? So, uh, because I, I checked his chart in, in uh, Vedic astrology that he had the Rahu in Maga, which is the lion, yeah? Uh, North not in, uh, in in this sign of lion, which is very connected to the actor. To yeah, the okay. Well, film, well, uh, and yep, very true. Now, in tropical, it's in um, Virgo. So, of course, Vedic is about 23 degrees. Yes, it's difference. Mm -hmm. Difference? Why? Well, that's because of processional slippage. Mm -hmm. So, um, Vedic, the Vedic system, which is Jotish, Hindu mm -hmm. astrology, Mm -hmm. um, is, is called sidereal astrology. This is tropical astrology yeah. because, because tropical astrology is based on the tropical points. And so as the seasons always have their beginnings at the tropical points, the equinoxes and the solstices, and the energies that are found around those tropical points never change. So in other words, on the 21st of this, uh, March, Every year, which is just a week away, mm -hmm. um, zero degrees right ascension of meridian or zero degrees Aries always begins. So that tropical position never moves. But, but what's happening with the sidereal, which means the stars, it's not based on the tropical system. It's based on the actual position astronomically of the yeah. planet. Yeah. Okay, now... This system also has merits. Um, I find it's very sad to see uh, tropical astrologers um, denouncing sidereal astrology and vice versa. I see on sidereal sites where they say, oh, the tropical system is wrong. It's not wrong. 
and neither is the sidereal system. They are separate systems, yes, separate language. I, I agree with you. That, that's, that's why like, we have uh, uh, Elvis Presley and North North Rahu in third house in Vedic and in second house in the tropical. Uh, but all houses are connected, uh, second and third. They are uh, influenced each other. Well, this is the thing. In both systems, the houses don't change. So, I mean, if, if the individual was born at that time, he will still have um, Jupiter in, in Vedic. He'll still have the house in his rising sign, but it'll, a, a rising ha house, but it, it'll be in a different sign. The only difference is the signs change, but the houses will never change. The positions are still the same. The planets, tropically or sidereally, the planets are still in the same positions and houses, but they will be in different signs, definitely, mm -hmm. usually. Uh, yeah, well, they will. Um, now, the, the thing is, um, uh, what were we talking about? About the Marlon Brando <coughs> profession. Uh, yes, I was going to finish with something though. Oh, look, an interesting thing here, as you can see that perfect blue triangle, mm -hmm. that's called a grand trine. Anyone who has a grand trine in their chart, they're very special. Or at least they have special energy in that particular element. In this case, um, it's pointing to Sagittarius fire, mm -hmm. Leo fire and Aries fire. So the man... Um, the man was rather mystical. He must be, because fire is mystical. Mm -hmm. Water is also mist, but M-I-S-T. Fire is M-Y-S-T. So this is a very, very spiritual feature, okay? And it usually, it usually is uh, found in the charts of people who, who have succeeded yeah. uh, greatness. D but um, usually um, depends on which houses that, that grand trine is found in. For instance, if it's found in the angles, remember the yellow houses uh, mostly, well then if, 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 um, if it's found in good positions like angular or, or, or um, succulent houses, yes. If it's pointing to a lot of uh, cadent houses and bad planets, not so much. Now, the other thing to um, pay attention to is the um, energy of each different planet in each different sign. Okay, so when someone um, goes into uh, the, web, their, the website to do their own chart, okay they might um find something like uh you know um how about this mars in capricorn uh with a square here they might f think well this is this is not good capricorn's the skeletal system surely um you know i'll have something some calcination in my bones or joints um or, or whatever maybe not because mars does well in Capricorn. Yeah, Mars it gives ex a lot of a lot of energy. It gives a lot of energy to these people. These people very often have uh, two jobs, three jobs, <laughs> and a profession. It's it's. I got Mars in Capricorn, and then uh, yeah yeah. It's 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 a lot of energy for 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 do different things in them. Exactly. So um, you may you may not find an illness there. You may. Um, but definitely if a different planet was there, it, which doesn't harmonize with Capricorn, it will upset the bones and the joints, etc. Now, um, I do have other things to comment on, but I think, um, you know, I mean, it's been a long enough presentation. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, in, in the uh, next presentation, if you like, we can discuss... Um, the respective professions of different signs. We can discuss um, how to identify the signs by their looks. There's yeah, the Aquarius. I would like, yeah. Aquarius always think yeah, through his eyes, he can recognize that they, are, they often think Aquarius. 
yeah, very, very intense eyes and very airy uh, because it's an air sign. So you can see that. You can see the small features on the face. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, all, you see the facial features, they're sort of all sort of small and narrow in the face. Whereas the Piscean, the next sign, you see the eyes are spread out wide like a fish. Yes, and yes. the mouth, um, it's a bit bigger sometimes, nice teeth, nice smiles they have, yeah, the Pisces. Uh, and they, they're good dancers sometimes because the Pisces connected with feet. Also, I, I can tell you that I, I checked the last uh, good football players. They, they have a strong Pisces, uh, Aquarius Pisces influences 12th house. Uh, so this gives uh, ability to dance, yeah, uh, to play, coordinate ball. Mm. Yep. Um, in, in Australia, at the turn of the century, because Australians love their Australian rules football, mm. uh, they, had, they had a list of 200 of the best footballers, mm -hmm. um, uh, 200 of the best footballers for the last century, okay, yeah. for the 20th century. And the top guy, Lee Matthews, yeah. Piscean. Piscean, yeah, I told you. And yeah, I check uh, lastly a lot of German uh, good uh, uh, Gerd Miller uh, in the past, the striker, yeah. Especially what I discovered, uh, there are lots of, as you mentioned also about the Mars energy, a lot of Scorpio, a lot of Aries uh, in attacks as a, as a, you know, striker. Very, very often. 70% of them, they have a big influence of Mars, which is the Scorpio and, and Aries in attacks, yeah. So, so this is in, it was incredible for me to discover that they also uh, influence of Pisces, Aquarius, uh, ability to, uh, to, to, to move the legs, but also injuries, yeah? Injuries yeah, is also connected. Yes. For legs. So now, um, anyone, even a beginner, can look at this mm -hmm. and he can see what it is. It's the, um, the blueprint, the energetic blueprint of the individual's soul, you could say. Their psychic nature, their mental nature, their propensities, their likes and dislikes, um, their, um, how they are configured energetically. You'll find some people that they've got weak little bodies and they're skinny and emaciated and then it can never get fat then you see these muscly men and everything this is all in the chart all of it is in here everything yes this, yes. this is the most practical science there is because it's the only elaborate energy natural system language there is and it has all the symbols. For instance, if you want to find out where, you're, where you are generous and friendly and happy, you look for Jupiter. So you see, Marlon Brando was uh, generous in his life, you know, as, as a personality. If you want to find out where you are active, you look for your Mars. If you want to find where you are eccentric and different, Uranus. Where you are emotional, and sensitive, the moon, where you are vital and um, magnanimous, the sun, how you communicate, Mercury, where what you love, Venus, how you are powerful in transforming and destroying, Pluto, how you are a syncretist and an integrator, Neptune, how you are disciplined and um, orderly and your rules, Saturn. And so you can see here mm -hmm. what this is. You can see it's a 24 hour clock. Everything is going around this way. You can see the body, your body is represented in here, starting from the head Aries going to the feet Pisces. You can see all the houses and all their meanings. Here is you, here is your money how you communicate, your home life, your pleasure in children, your illness, your marriage and partners, your inheritance uh, and death, your religious practices and yes. spiritual practices and higher learning, 
your public life, your dignity, your honours, your career, your fame, glory, distinctions, mm -hmm. uh, your social life, and your private life. Yes, it's all here. And I will want to, to say that uh, we, in the previous interview, we, you, you mentioned as well the 21st of March, the, the beginning of, of uh, new energy, and uh, I, I connected to Ashwini, the first uh, uh, nakshatra. Uh, but in this, of course, a lot of uh, things today, uh, is, it's changed. Uh, so we think that today, what we see, that the new year start in 1st of uh, January, which in my opinion is, is against the nature, against energies, uh, the, the, the new year should start 21st of March, uh, when everything starts. And today, we can recognize uh, the name uh, of the month, for example, September, as you mentioned before, it's called connected with seven uh, Sapta in Sanskrit Sapta, yeah? And the October, Akta, which is the eighth. So we still see a connection with the, the names yeah, of the month, which, which to, in this calculation, the, the first month should start in, in March to, to get the September as a 7 and October as a 8. Yeah, and November comes from Nava, Navagraha. Yes, yes. Nova, Nava, and so it's 9. 9. Uh, in mm -hmm. Italian, 9 is Nove. In, in Sanskrit, Neva, Neva. Nava. In is Spanish, nine. Yes. And okay. which... Uh, uh, which in Polish language, uh, in Sanskrit 10, it's, it's Desia, uh, in, in Russian and Polish and S S Slavic, Dziesięć, Desia, it's, it's very similar. Well, I've done presentations where I've explained this. Mar March, mm -hmm. uh, March used to be called, the, the, um, the, the Aries and March used to be called Primus. So we had Primus, Secundus, Tertius, oh. Quartus, Quintus, uh, Cestus and Septimus, September. Yes. October, October mm -hmm. November, December. December 10, yeah, December. So we have okay. all coded, we have all coded, we can only see this today, that somebody in the past who changed this, he changed, he changed something, uh, what, what, what is, uh, it doesn't really mean that this is good, actually, because, uh, as you mentioned, 500 years ago, everything stopped uh, so in we can't see today big academies big libraries in ancient world in in egypt and it's only london maybe vatican and the other places what holds all this all this knowledge what we can't see today we can visit this this uh, library and check any books yeah the, everything is uh, holds by them yeah. it's it's not in the interest of the Vatican who controls all corporate entities on the planet um, to promote astrology. They are not into, uh, they cannot afford to uh, promote anything other than allopathic chemical treatments because that's how you make money because all of those are paid and they're only interested in money and business because they run a business. Yes. Okay? yes. So, and also so the, you, the minerals, the salts, as you mentioned about for each zodiac, the people who coming to, to me and saying that this is all, uh, this is all uh, in the first Google, first two, three pages, when you put this name, you can see only the chemicals name uh, with the same name, which is, doesn't really mean that this is poison, yeah? This is just uh, ancient minerals, uh, ancient names for these minerals, like uh, um, magnesium or phosphate and, but today, are they using the same name for, for chemicals? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. But the combinations that m they make do not occur in nature. Yeah. And so they are harmful. You okay, see, this, yeah. is where, this is where their science is, um, is not perfect. It's, it's very, very deficient. And they don't care because they take cheap shortcuts to patent their drugs so they can make money quickly. So yeah. they put sodium fluoride in toothpaste. Now yeah. sodium, yes. because <laughs> the same name. Most people know that fluoride or fluorine. Um, so when you do calcium with two um, uh, uh, two um, atoms or uh, molecules of fluorine, you get fluoride. So yeah. calcium fluoride 
yeah, that's good for you. And that will, that will help your teeth. But sodium and, and, and fluorine, they don't, they are toxic. They're and toxic, see, yeah. Yes. When the doctors, when they, when they use it in advertising, that this is the minerals in the toothpaste for the, for the teeth and bones, this is, this is not true because this is not organic uh, uh, sodium. This is not organic because you can have organic or non-organic. But that's what they're using. This is from production of aluminum, which is the chemicals. And, and we keep this heavy metals in the body long, long time. It's very hard to, 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 to remove it from the body. So the doctor should know this. And, and this is really connected to what you said about Pythagoras, who said that uh, doctors who doesn't know medical astrology, it must be crazy to care people. Yeah, yeah you know, um, it's a shame that we only have short time. I think next time mm -hmm. we could possibly do uh, the chart of a, of a famous individual and just go through all the areas and show and show um, how the their health is connected to the chart. Um, and so most of these public figures, we know their um, medical um, condition because you know whether they've been in rehab or they've had yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, something removed or they've had an illness or a depression or uh, something. Or we can do yours and my chart and we can spend more time yeah. just on medical things. So what I want to do... Um, in subsequent um, shows with you is is deal with the um, the practical benefits of astrology and one thing that really needs to be done is show how astrology can prognosticate the future you see um, a lot of people uh, laugh at this oh fortune telling yes sometimes it is laughable because you see uh, certain ones that only use their intuition and pretend to be looking into a crystal ball and just say things that are pleasing yeah. to the ears of their paying customers and um, just um, uh, to make a living. This is what is condemned in the Bible. What is not condemned is when uh, one uses scientific methods. So... <clears throat> What I want to show is a technique called secondary directions. Mm -hmm. It's a means of prognosticating, which is absolutely fail proof. Um, you can see, um, for instance, we can go into the life of an individual and we can go backwards in their chart, in their transits, in their solar returns, in their progressions, forwards, backwards. And we can see all the events of their lives. For instance, when they're, when they had a car accident, when they got married, when they had their first, second, third child, when they had their divorce, all of it. You can actually go back and you can see back in their lives, you can see where all the planets are placed and you can see all these occurrence, occurrences happening. I've seen this time after time after time where you, you can only have full confidence and faith and knowledge that this is a, so, a science that can, if you become competent and fully developed and acquainted with the science, you can find all information in there. It's like a, a snowflake. Every chart is different. And as those planets turn and churn around the ecliptic, and they are always interacting with today's current planets. That's what transit means. Um, when, you, when you compare your natal um, chart with the planets of today, you can see that how those planets have interacted with your chart and brought about all the sad and happy events, all the good and bad events yeah. of your life it's all in the chart it's all on the ecliptic yeah yeah it's a big science but we can explain them basics uh, basics are very important to understand another uh, connection because as we know this is frequencies uh, changing and one is bigger one one lower and we are really individuals and it's very hard to connect uh, just two people uh, compare 
because every everybody has different influence of this energy and houses and uh, exaltation debilitation is is all really fascinating it is it is and so um something to look forward to i hope uh, that i've been clear and yes that let's let's do in the, another series about the profession and uh, how to recognize each each zodiac because many people ask uh, for this it would be very a uh, very fascinating uh, uh, program. Okay, well, I look forward to um, the next show then. Thank you. Thank you very much, Santo. All the yep. best. Take care. Until next time. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.